plan tonight? I have seen nothing. Uh, Horatio says tis but our fantasy, oh. and will not believe, let believe take hold of him. Hush, hush, will not appear. Now sit down, my sit. And let us once again assail your ears that are so fortified against our story what we two knights have yeah. seen. Well, sit down and let us hear Bernardo speak of it. Last night fall, when yon same star that's westward from the pole and made his course to elude that part of heaven where it now burns, Marcellus and myself, the bell that beat in blood, a peace break the off. Look, where it comes again! Sure. In the same figure like the king that's dead. Th th thou art a scholar, go, go, go speak to it, Horatio. Looks it not like the king, Margaret Horatio. Most like it, it harrows me with fear and wonder. It would be spoke to. Well, question it, Horatio. What art thou that usurpest this time of night together with that fair and warlike form in which the majesty of fairy Denmark did sometimes march? By heaven I charge thee, speak. Oh, it is offending. See, it stops away. Speak, stay, speak, I think, I charge thee, speak. He is gone and will not answer. How now, Horatio, you tremble and look pale. Is not this something more than a fantasy? What think you of it? Before my God, I, I might not believe this without the sensible and true about of mine own eyes. Is it not like the king? As thou art to thyself, right? Such was the very armor he had on when the ambitious Norway combated it. Tis strange! And just twice before, and just at this dead hour, with martial stock, hath he gone by our watch. Hey, hey. <coughs> Marcellus Bernardo, what kind of music do you like to listen to? Oh, I love rap. Hip hop gets me amped for my shift. I like classical opera. Oh, yeah, she It does. really puts me in the mood. You guys make a great so. pair. Thank you. <laughs> In what particular? In what particular thought of work? Uh, I know not. This boat some strange eruption to our state. Now, good. Now sit down and tell me he that knows why this same strict and most observant watch so nightly toils the subject of the land. Who is it that can inform? That can I. At least the whisper goes so. Our last king, whose image even but now did appear to us, was as you know, by Fortinbras of Norway, they're too pricked on by a most emulent pride, dare to the combat, in which our valiant Hamlet, for so this side is uh, known would esteem him, did slay this Fortinbras, who by a sealed compact, well ratified by law and heraldry, did forfeit with his life all those his lands, which had stood and seized on to the conqueror. But soft, soft, behold, lo, where it comes again, I'll cross it, though it blasts me. <laughs> Stay, illusion! If thou hast any good sound or use of voice, speak to me. If there be any good thing to be done that may need do the ease and grace to speak to me. If thou art privy to thy country's fate, which happily foreknowing may avoid, oh, speak! You know, if thou hast apported in thy life an extorted treasure in the womb of earth, for which they say you spirits have oft walked in death, stay, speak of it. Stay and speak it. Stop it, Marcellus. What, what, shall I strike at it with my partisan? Do what? if it will not stand. It is here. It is here. Oh, it is gone. We do it wrong, being oh. so majestical to offer it a show of violence, for it is as the air, invulnerable, and our vein blows malicious mockery. It was about to speak. Marcellus, what would you offer the ghost instead of violence? A sandwich. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I, I always thought, like, if I died, I'd really be I'd be hungry really quick. Maybe Wouldn't some you? water on yeah, a Yeah, like, like a soda. Yeah, I bet it's been a while. It was about to speak. It was about to speak when the cock crew. And then it started like, like a guilty thing upon a fearful summons. But look, the morning russet mantle clad walks o'er the dew of yon hill, an eastern hill. Where am I? Break, break, me break we watch. up our watch, and by my advice, let us impart what we have seen tonight unto young Hamlet, for upon my life the spirit dumb to us will speak to her. Do you consent we shall acquaint with her as needful in our loves, fitting our duty? Okay, okay, let's do it, I pray. And this morning, no, no, where we shall find her most conveniently. Enter, Claudius, Gertrude, no. Claudius. Laertes Ophelia, welcome. Though yet of Hamlet, 
our dear brother's death, the memory be grief, and that it be fitted to bear our hearts in grief and our whole kingdom to be contracted in one bow of woe. Yet, so far, hath Claudius, what's your uh, expansion plans for the Max system? I would like my people to walk more, so we're going to be shutting it down. It's better for your health, and it's easier to catch Pokemon. Max is too fast. Yet so far, yet so far, hath discretion sought with that nature that we, with wisest sorrow, think on him, together with remembrance of ourselves. Therefore, our sometime sister, now our queen, the imperial jointress to this warlike state, have we, as twerk, with a defeated joy, with mirth in funeral, and with dirge in marriage, taken to wife. Mixed reactions there. Nor have we herein barred your better wisdoms, which have freely gone with this affair along. For all our thanks. Now follows that you know young Fortinbras, holding a weak supposal of our worth, or thinking by our late dear brother's death our state to be disjoint or out of frame, he hath not failed to pester us with message, importing the surrender of those lands lost by his father with all bonds of law to our most valiant brother. So much for him. Enter Voltamine. Thus much. Where are you, Voltamine? Thus, thus much. The business is. We have here Rick. Voltamine, is that your helicopter? I can't see it. I think you would know if you had a helicopter. I, I guess that's a no. I have several. That's how we're sending him to Norway. Ah, great. I understand. Buy a helicopter. Speaking of Norway, we have here Rick. <laughs> To Norway, uncle of young Fortinbras, who impotent and bedridden, scarcely of his nose, of his nephew's purpose to suppress his further gait herein. We hear dispatch for bearing of this greeting to old Norway. Farewell, and let your hats commend your duty. In that and all things we will show our duty. We doubt it nothing, heartily farewell. And now, Laertes, what's the news with you? The head is not more native to the heart, the hand more instrumental to the mouth, than is the throne of Denmark to thy father. What wouldst thou have, Laertes? Uh, dread, my lord, your leave and favor to return to France, from whence though willingly I came to Denmark to shew my duty in your coronation. Uh, yet now I must confess that duty done, my thought and wishes bend again towards France, and bow them your gracious leave and pardon. Mm. Have you your father's leave? What says Polonius? He hath, my lord, I do beseech you to what? <laughs> Give him leave to go. <laughs> Take thy fair hour, Laertes, time be thine, and thy best graces, spend it at thy will. But now, my cousin Hamlet and my girl, Little more than kin, less than kind. How is it that the clouds still hang on you? Hmm. Not so, my lord, I am too much in the sun. Oh, good Hamlet, cast thy knightly color off, and let thine eye look like a friend on Denmark. Do not forever with the, thy veiled lids seek for thy noble father in the dust. Thou know tis common that all lives must die passing through nature to eternity. Aye, madam, it is common. <laughs> the being, why, why seems it so peculiar with these? Seems, madam. Nay, it is. I know not seems. Tis not alone my inky cloak, good mother, nor the customary suits of solemn black, nor the dejected behavior of the visage, together with all forms, moves, shows of grief that can denote me truly. These indeed seem, for they are actions that a man might act. But I have that within which passion show. 
these but the trappings and the suits of woe. <laughs> Tis sweet and commendable in your nature, Hamlet, to give these morning duties to your father. But you must know, your father lost a father. That father lost, lost his, and the survivor bound in filial obligation for some term to do obsequious sorrow, but to persever in obstinate condolement is a course of impious stubbornness. Tis unmanly grief. Gertrude, do you remember when Hamlet was just a little kid running around like this? Yes, she sat by him herself a lot, looked at the water. I never understood her. <laughs> She's always pale. Tis unmanly grief. Tis unmanly grief. It shows a will most incorrect to heaven. This must be so. We pray you throw to earth this unprevailing woe and think of us as of a father. For let, for, for let the world take note. You are the most immediate to our throne. And you're next in line. And with no less nobility of love than that which a dearest father bears his girl, do I impart towards you. Claudius, give me five other places that are good to be next in line at. Uh, at the movies. What? Uh, getting on the max. Which True. Is still here. Um, uh, the, 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 the owner of a company. Three. Uh, the water slide. Four. And the bathroom. Five. Good. For your intent. For your intent in going back to school in Wittenberg, it is most retrograde to our desire. And we beseech you, bend you, to remain here in the cheer and comfort of our eye. Our chiefest courtier, cousin, and our girls. Let not thy mother lose her prayers, Hamlet. I pray stay with us. Go not to Wittenberg. I shall, in all my best, obey you, madam. <laughs> Why, tis a loving and a fair reply. Be as ourselves in Denmark. Madam, come. This gentle and unforced accord of Hamlet sits smiling to my heart. Ah! Its tooth and solid flesh would melt, thaw, and resolve itself into a dew, or that the everlasting had not fixed his cannon against self slaughter. Oh, God! Oh, God! God, how weary, stale, flat, and unprofitable seems to me all the uses of this world. That it should come to this. But two months dead. Hey, not two. Not so much. That's not enough time. No. Where was I? So excellent a king. So excellent a king. It was to this Hyperion, to a satyr. So loving to my mother, must I remember? Why, she would hang on him as if the increase of appetite had grown by what it fed on. And yet, within a month, or ere, what? Let me not think on it. Let me not think on it. Frailty, thy name is woman! <laughs> A little month. A little month. Or ere those shoes were old with which she followed my poor father's body like Niobe. All tears. Why she, even she, a, a, a beast that wants discourse of reason would have mourned longer. Help. Married with my uncle. Married with my uncle? My father's brother, but no more like my father than I to Hercules. Within a month, or ere the salt of most unrighteous tears 
had left the flushing of her galled eyes, she married. Oh, most wicked speed to post with such dexterity to incestuous sheets. It will not, nor it cannot come to good. Help. To break my heart. To break my heart. For I must hold my tongue. Glad to see you well. Horatio, or I do forget myself. Oh, I the same my lord, and your purse poor servant as ever. Ah, no, my good friend. <laughs> Let me change that name with you. And what make you from Wittenberg, Horatio? A truant disposition, good my lord. Ah, I would not have your enemy say so. Against yourself? I know you are no truant. But what is your fare at Elsinau? Uh, my lord, I came to see your father's funeral. I pray thee, do not mark me. Do not mock me, fellow student. I think it was to see my mother's wedding. Indeed, my lord, it followed hard upon. Drift, drift, Horatio. The funeral baked meat. What? what? Did, coldly Did coldly furnish forth the marriage tables. Would I had met my dearest foe in heaven, or ere I had seen that day, Horatio. Uh, Horatio, what kind of uh, funeral baked meats were at that piece? Mostly ham? Yeah, what else do you imagine it? What else? Uh, lots of grapes around the ham. It was one of those whole roasted pigs. Oh. And it had an apple in it. And my, my I had this idea to like eat the apple, that maybe it'd be like a porky apple, like flavored like meat, but I'm still eating fruit. I don't eat enough fruit as it is, especially at funerals. <laughs> I go to a lot of them because there's lots of others. But like I try to eat like my fair share of watermelon, but that's not as nutritious as it should be. So I try my to father. <laughs> my father. I see my father. Uh, my lord, I think I saw him yesternight. Saw? Who? Uh, my lord, the king, your father. The king, my father. Season your admiration for a while with an attent ear till I may deliver upon your witness uh, of these gentles, this marvel to you. Heavens, let me hear. Two nights together had these gentles, Marcellus and Bernardo, on their watch in the dead and vast middle of the night being thus encountered, a figure like your father appear before them and with solemn march go slow and stately by them thrice he walked. This to me in dreadful secrecy in part they did and I with them the third night kept the watch whereas they had delivered both in time and form of the thing each word made true and good. The apparition comes. I knew your father. These hands are not more like. Did you not speak to it? Uh, no, my lord, I did. I, but answer made it none. Uh, yet once, methought it, it lifted up its head and did address itself to motion, like like as it would speak. But even then, the morning cock crew loud, and at that sound it shrunk and passed away and vanished from our sight. Very strange. As I do live, my honored lord, tis true. And we did think it writ down in our duty to let you know of it. Indeed, sirs. But this troubles me. I would I have been there? Oh, it would have much amazed you. Very light. Very light. Stayed it long? Well, one with moderate hast might tell a hundred. A hundred. Long, long, long. Uh, not when I saw it. I'll watch tonight. Perchance to awake again. I warrant you it will. If it assume my noble father is shape, I'll speak to it though hell itself should gape and bid me hold my peace. I pray you all, if you have hitherto concealed this sight, let it be treble in your silence still. Upon the platform, weeks 11 and 12, I'll visit you. Our duty to your, Our honor. Duty to your honor. Your love as mine to you. Farewell. I doubt some foul play with the night were come. Till then, sit still, my soul. Foul deeds will rise, though all the earth o'erwhelm them to men's eyes. Farewell. But let me hear from you. Oh, do you huh? doubt that? Yeah, for Hamlet. 
and the trifling of his favors, hold it a fashion and a toy in blood, the suppliance of the minute, no more. No more, but so. What am I saying? Think it no Think more. It no more. Perhaps he loves you now, but you must fear her greatness weighed. Well, now, her will is not her own. She may not, as unvalued persons do, carve for herself, for on her choice depends the sanctity and health of the whole state. Then weigh what loss your honor may sustain if with too prudent ear you risk her songs or lose your heart or your chaste oh, treasure uh, open tis to her unmastered importunity. Fear it, Ophelia. Fear it, my dear sister. Be wary then. Best safety lies in fear. You to itself rebels, though none else near. Uh, I shall the effect of this good lesson keep as watchman to my heart, but good my brother, do not as some ungracious pastors do show me the steep and thorny way to heaven, whilst like a puffed reclatine himself the primrose path of dallying treads and makes out his own read. Oh, fear me not. What? <laughs> I say to God, oh, but here comes my father. A double blessing is a double grace. Occasion uh, smiles upon a second leap. <laughs> Get here, dear. Aboard, aboard for shame. The wind sits in the shoulder of your sail, and you are staying for there. My blessing with you. And uh, these few precepts to uh, keep in thy memory. See thou, character. Give thy thoughts no tongue. Uh, what else? Nor any opportunity. Nor any, uh, any unproportioned thought is act. Be thou familiar, but by no means vulgar. Give every man thy ear, but uh, few thy voice. Take each man's censure, but reserve thy judgment. Neither a borrower nor a lender be, for loan oft loses both itself and friend. This, above all, to thine own self be true. And it must follow as night follows day. Thou canst not be false to any man. Farewell, my blessing season. Polonius, give me advice for the children playing over here. Oh, to the audience. To the audience. Yeah, tell them the advice. I say, uh, be sure to speak all of your thoughts at once. Do not censor yourself at all. Uh, be rude and bold. Uh, splash as loudly and as largely as you can. Do not worry about... Trump's for you. <laughs> okay, I'm going to build a water park. It's going to be huge. I know how to build these things. I've been doing it my whole life. It's going to be great. Uh, most humbly do I take my leave. Most humbly do I take my leave, my lord. Oh. The time invites you. Go, your servants ten. Farewell, Ophelia, and remember well what I have said to you. To <laughs> this I have very long, and you yourself shall keep the key of it. Farewell. Farewell. Bye. No. What is Ophelia he hath said to you? Oh, so please you something me catching the Lord Hamlet. Very well be thought. She told me she hath very oft of late given private time to you, and you yourself have of your audience been most free and bounteous. What is between you? Give me up the truth. She hath, my lord, of late made many tenders of her affection to me. Affection? Ha! Huh. You speak as a green girl, unsifted in such perilous circumstance. Do you believe her tenders, as you call them? Polonius, yes. uh, what is your advice for uh, Claudius to expand the max? Claudius to expand the max? Oh, uh, the last yeah. meeting I attended, he, he was talking about uh, removing it altogether, but to expand it, I say we should put it down every street, yes. up and down every block. There should be no problems with traffic. Uh, I think it'll be a great revenue generator for this fair city. That is one of my tasks as the treasurer of our fair city, is to make sure that the coffers are, uh, you know... Okay, you're going to do one. I do not know. That's what I do. I do not know, my lord, what I should think. Mary, I'll teach you. Think yourself a baby, that you have tamed her tenders for true pay, which are not sterling. Tender yourself more dearly. Roaming it thus, you'll tender me a fool. My lord, she hath imprints for me with love and honorable fashion. Ha <laughs> ha, fashion, you may call it. Go, go. And have given countenance to her speech with all the vows of heaven. 
Ah, springes to catch woodcocks. I do know when the blood burns how prodigal the soul gives the tongue bows. These blazes, daughter, you must not take for fire. For this time, daughter, be somewhat scanter of your maiden presence uh, than, uh, than what? <laughs> this is all you, no advice from me. <laughs> Set your entreatments at a higher rate than a command to parley. For Lord Hamlet believes so much in her that she is young, and with a larger tether may she walk than may be given you. In few, Ophelia, do not believe her vows. This is for all. I would not, in plain terms from this time forth, have you so slander any moment leisure as to give words or talk with the Lord Hamlet. Look to it. I charge you. Come your ways. I shall obey, my lord. Air by Trudely is a very cold. It is a nipping and an eager air. What hour now? Uh, I think it lack of twelve. No, it is struck. Uh, indeed, I I heard it not. But then it draws near the season wherein the spirit held his wont to walk. Oh, look, my lord, it comes. Angels. Angels and ministers of grace defend us. Be thou a spirit of help or goblin damned. Bring with thee airs from heaven or blasts from hell. Be thy events wicked or charitable. Thou comest in such a questionable shape that I will speak to thee. I'll, ca I'll call thee Hamlet. Uh, king! Father! Royal Dane! Oh, oh, answer me! Let me not burst in ignorance, but tell why thy canonized bones have, have burst their cerements, and what? Why the sepulcher? Why their sepulcher, wherein we saw thee quietly inurned, hath oped with ponderous and marble jaws to cast thee up again. What made us be? Say, why is this? Wherefore? What should we do? It beckons you to go away with it as if some impartment to desire to you alone. But look, with what courteous action it walks you to a more removed wrap. But, but do, do not go with it. No, 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 by no means. If you'll not speak, then will I follow it. Do no. not, my lord. Why? What should be the fear? I do not set my life at a pin's fee. And for my soul, what can it do to that being a thing immortal as itself? Leads me forth again. I'll follow it. What if it tempt you toward a flood, my lord? Or to the dreadful summit of some cliff, and there assume some other horrible form which might deprive your sovereignty of reason and draw you unto madness? Think of it! To box me still. Go on. I'll follow me. No, 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 you shall not go, my lord. Hold up your head. Be ruled. Be ruled. You shall not go. My face cries out. Still am I called? Unhand me, gentlewoman! By heaven I'll make a ghost of her that lets me! I say away! Go on, I'll follow me! She waxes desperate with imagination, but will never let follow her. She's not fit thus to obey him. Come after her. To, to what issue will come? Well, something is wrong in the state of Denmark. Heaven will direct it. Nay, hey, let's follow him. Where, where will that lead me? Speak! I'll go no further. Mark me! I will. My hour is almost come when I to sulfurous and tormenting flames must render up myself. Alas, poor ghost. Pity me not, but lend thy serious hearing to what I will unfold. Speak. I am bound to hear. So art thou to revenge when thou shalt hear. What? I am thy father's spirit, doomed for a certain term to walk the night and for the day cast confined to fast in fires till the foul crimes done in my days of nature are burnt and purged away. But I am forbid to tell the secrets of my prison house. I could a tale unfold whose lightest word would harrow up thy soul, freeze thy young blood. This eternal place and must not be the ears of flesh and blood. List, Hamlet, oh list, if thou didst never thy dear father love. Heaven. Revenge is foul and most unnatural murder! Murder? 
murder most foul, as in the best it is, but this most foul, strange and unnatural. I has haste me to know it, that with wings as, as swift as meditation or the thoughts of love may sway to my revenge. I find the apt. It's given out that sleeping in mine orchard, a serpent stung me. So the whole ear of Denmark is by a forged process of my death rankly abused. But know thou noble youth, the serpent that did sting thy father's life now wears his crown. Oh, my prophetic soul, mine uncle. Aye, that incestuous, that adulterate beast with witchcraft of his wits hath traitorous gifts. Oh, wicked wit and gifts that have the power so to seduce, one to this shameful lust, the will of my most seeming virtuous queen. Oh, Hamlet, what a falling off was there from me whose love was that of dignity that it went hand in hand even with the vow I made to her in marriage. And to decline upon a wretch whose natural gifts were poor, but soft. Thinks I said the morning's air. Brief let me be, sleeping in mine orchard, my custom always in the afternoon. Upon my secure hour thy uncle stole with juice a cursed heaven on in a vial, and into the porches of mine ears did pour the leprous distillment, whose effect holds such an enmity with blood of man that swift as quicksilver it courses through the natural gates and alleys of the body. Thus was I, sleeping by a brother's hand, of life, of crown, and queen at once dispatched, cut off even in the blossoms of my sin, with no reckoning made but sent to my account with all my imperfections on my head. Oh, horrible! Oh, horrible! Most horrible! If thou hast nature in thee, bear it not. Let not the royal bed of Denmark be a couch for luxury and damned incest. But howsoever thou pursuest this, that taints not thy mind, nor let thy soul contrive against thy mother aught. Leave her to heaven, and to those thorns that in her bosom lodge to prick and sting her. Fare thee well, Hamlet. Adieu. Adieu. Hamlet. Remember me! Oh, all you host of heaven, remember thee? I, thou poor ghost, while memory holds a place in this distracted globe, remember thee? Yea, from the table of my memory, I'll wipe away all trivial fond record, all saws of books, all what else? Forms. All pressures past that youth and observation copied there. And thy commandment, all alone, shall live within the book and volume of my brain, unmixed with spacer matter. Yes. Yes, by heaven! How? Oh, most pernicious woman. Oh, most. Damned villain, 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 smiling, damned villain. My table, my table. Meet it as I set it down, that one may smile and smile and be a villain. At least I'm sure it may be so in Denmark. So, uncle, there you are. Not to my word. It is. Adieu, adieu, remember me. I swore it.
drink it. You'll be secret. I'm 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 my heaven, my lord. lord. There's ne'er a villain dwelling in all Denmark, but he's an errant knave. There needs no ghost, my lord, come from the grave to tell us this. <laughs> By right, you are in the right. And so, without more circumstance at all, I hold it fit that we uh, shake hands and part. You as your business and desire shall point you, for every man has business and desire such as it is, and for mine own poor part, look you, I'll go pray. There are but wild and hurling words, my lord. I'm sorry they offend you. Hard yes, heartily. There's no offense, my lord. Yes, by St. Patrick, but there is, my lord, and much offense too, touching this vision here. Oh, it is an honest ghost, that let me tell you. For your desire to know what is between us, as you are friends, scholars, soldiers, give me one poor request. What is my lord you will? Never make known what you have seen tonight. My lord, we will not. Nay, but swear it. In faith, my lord, not I. I, my lord, in faith. Swear! Propose the oath, my lord. Never to speak of this that you have seen. Swear on my sword. Swear! Day and night, this is but wondrous strange. And therefore, as a stranger, give it welcome. There are more things in heaven and earth, Horatio, than are dreamt of in our philosophy. But come, here as before, never so help you mercy how strange or odd so e'er I bear myself, as I perchance hereafter shall think meet to put an antic disposition on that you, at such time seeing me, never shall, giving out to note that you know aught of me, this not to do. So grace and mercy in your most need help you swear. Swear! Rest. Rest, perturbed spirit. So, <clears throat> gentles, with all my love, I do commend me to you. And still, your fingers on your lips, I pray. Time is out of joint. Oh, cursed spite that ever I was born to set it right. Nay, come, let's go together. Well, now, Ophelia, what's the matter? Alas, my lord, I have been so afraided. With what in the name of heaven? My lord. As I was sawing in my chamber, Lord Hamlet with her doublet all embraced, no, no hat upon her, had her stockings fouled, pale as her shirt, her knees knocking each other, and with a look so piteous and purpled as if she had been lost out of health. To speak of horror, she comes before me. Mad for thy love? I don't know, my lord, but truly I do fear it. What said she? Took me by the wrist and held me hard. Then goes she to the length of all her arms, and then with her other hand, thus o'er her brow, she falls to such perusal of my face as she would draw it. Long stayed she so. She raised a sigh so piteous and profound that it did seek to shake all her bulk and end her being. That done, she lets me go. And with her head. Amelia, will you empathize with that child?
sorry that with better speed and judgment I had not quoted her. Fear, I fear she did but trifle, and meant to rack thee, but be shrew my jealousy, this must be known, which being kept close might move more grief to hide than hate to utter love. Well, dear Rosie, friends and gentlemen, sir, moreover that we did long to see you, the need we have to use you to provoke our hasty sending. Something have you heard of Hamlet's transformation? What it should be more than her father's death that thus hath put her so much from the understanding of herself, I cannot deem of. I entreat you both that being of so young days brought up with her to draw her on to pleasures and to gather as much from occasions you may glean that open lies with our remedy. Good gentlemen, uh, she hath talked much of you, and sure I am, two men are not living to see more and hear. Both your majesties might by the sovereign power you have of us put your dread pleasures more into command than entreaty. Uh, we both obey and here give up ourselves in the full bent uh, to, to lay our services freely at your feet to be commanded. Thanks, chosen press and gentle gilded, sir. Uh, thanks. Gildenstern and gentle Rosenkrantz. And I proceed to instantly to uh, visit my two changed girl. Heavens make our presences and our practices pleasant and helpful to her. Amen. The ambassador, my lord, uh, from Norway is joyfully returned. <laughs> Thou hast still been the father of good news. Have I, my lord? Assure you, my good liege, I hold my duty as I hold my soul, both to my God, one to my gracious king. And I do think that I have found the very cause of Hamlet's lunacy. Oh, speak of that, that do I long to hear. Give first admittance to the ambassador, my news shall be news to that great feast. Thyself do grace to them and bring them in. I doubt it is no other but the main, uh, her father's death in our or hasty marriage. Well, we shall sift him. Welcome, good friend. Say, Voltamond, what from our brother Norway? Most fair returns of greetings and desires. Upon our first, he sends out arrests on Fortinbras, which he, in brief, obeys. Receives rebuke from Norway, and in fine makes bow up before his uncle, never more to give the say of arms against your majesty. Whereon old Norway, overcome with joy, gives his commission to employ those soldiers, so levied as before against the polio, with an entreaty herein further shown that might please you to give to, uh, what quiet pass. to give quiet pass through your dominion for his enterprise on such regards and safety and allowance, and therein are set down. It likes us well. Go to your rest. At night we'll feast together. Most welcome home. This, this business is very well ended. My liege and madam, to expostulate what majesty is, should be, what duty is, why day is day, night, night, and time is time, nothing but to waste the night, day, and time. Therefore, since brevity is the soul of wit, and tediousness the limbs and outward flourishes, I will be brief. Your noble girl is mad. Fire truck, Polonius. Tell me about the worst fire you've ever seen. The worst fire I ever seen was a book of matches spontaneously combusted in a kitchen. Yes, and it was very, very frightening. I almost wet myself, and then I noticed that there was a sink nearby. I took the matches, threw them into the sink, turned the sink on, and put the fire out. <laughs> I will be brief. I will be brief. Your noble girl is mad, mad call I it for, to define true madness, what is but to be nothing else but mad, but let that go. <laughs> more no, uh, more matter and less art. Madam, I swear I use no art at all. That she is mad, tis true, tis true, tis pity, and pity it is true. A foolish figure, but farewell it's, for I will use no art. Mad let us grant her then. And now remains that we find out the cause of this effect, or rather say, the cause of this defect, for this effect defective comes by cause. Thus it remains, and the remainder thus. Repent, 
I have a daughter. Uh, while she is mine, who, in her duty and obedience, Mark, has uh, given me this. Now gather and surmise. To the celestial and my soul's idol, the most beautified Ophelia. That's an ill phrase, a vile phrase. It came Beautiful this from, is a vile phrase. Yes. Came this from Hamlet to her. Good madam, stay a while, I will be faithful. <laughs> uh, doubt thou the stars are fire. Doubt that the sun doth move. Doubt truth to be a liar, but never doubt I knew. Oh, dear Ophelia, I am ill at these numbers. I have not heart to reckon my groans, but that I love thee best. Oh, most best. Buddies, you got a rap for this? This beat? I can barely hear the beat. It's what? gone. It's gone. It's huh? gone. It's, it's a, gone. It's a boom, boom. Wait, boom, I just boom, got it cut. <laughs> oh, dear Ophelia. Oh, dear Ophelia, I am ill at these numbers. I have not art to reckon my groans, but that I love thee best. Oh, most best believe it, adieu. Thine evermore, most dear lady, whilst this machine is to her hammock. This in obedience my daughter hath showed me. But how hath she received her love? What do you think of me? <laughs> As of a man. Faithful and honorable. I would fain prove so. But what might you think when I had seen this hot love on the wing as I perceived it? I must tell you that before my daughter told me what you or my dear majesty, your queen here, think, if I had looked upon this love with idle sight, and my young mistress, thus I did bespeak, Lord Hamlet, that is a prince out of thy star. This must not be. And then I, precepts, gave her that she should lock herself from her resort and her repulse. A short tale to make fell into a sadness, then into a fast, then into a watch, then into a weakness, then into a lightness, and by this declension, this what? <laughs> declension into the madness whereon now she raves, and all we wail for. Do you think tis this? It may be very likely. Have there been such a time, I fain know that, that I have positively said tis so when it proved otherwise? Not that I know. How may we try it further? Well, you know, sometimes she walks four hours together here in the lobby. And so she has indeed. At such a time, I'll loose my daughter to her. <laughs> Be you and I behind an heiress then, mark the encounter. If she love her or not, and be not from her reason fain fallen thereon, let me be no assistant for a state, and keep a farm and carters. We will try it. But look where the sad poor wretch comes reading. Away! I do beseech you both away. I'll board her presently. Oh, give me leave. How oh, does my good Lord Hamlet? Hey, I'll get a mercy. Do you know me, Lord? Excellent, excellent. Well, you're a fishmonger. Not I, my Lord. Uh, Hamlet, what do you do on the mats? Oh, well, I like to hang on the, on the bars and do monkey swings. And try to kick people out of the flight. Watch out! Put me on the max. You can tell me by my hair. Uh, not I, my lord. Not <laughs> I, my lord. <laughs> then I you were. Yes, I just said it. Not I, my lord. Uh, then I would you were so honest a man. Honest, my lord. I, sir, to be honest as this world goes, is to be one man picked out of two thousand. It is very true, my lord. For if the sun breed maggots in a dead dog, being a good kissing period. Have you a daughter? I have, my lord. Let her not walk in the sun. Conception is a blessing, but not as your daughter may be. Friend, look to it. How say you that? Still harping on my daughter, yet she knew me not at first. She said I was a fishmonger. She is far gone, far gone, and truly, in my youth I suffered much extremity for love, uh, very near this. I'll speak to her again. Uh, what do you read, my lord? Words, words, words. What is the matter, my lord? Between who? I mean, the matter you mean, my lord. Slanders, sir. 
or the uh, satirical slave says here that old men have gray beards, that their faces are wrinkled, that they have a plentiful lock of wit together with weak hands. Oh, which, sir, though I most powerfully and potently believe, yet I hold it not honesty to have it thus set down. For you yourself, sir. Can you do a dramatic reading from one of those pages? All Just right. Choose a phrase. The Invisible Countess carried out the green as the usual stage of entertainment, and the file of beauty was closed up by the bosom. Treasury, said Juno. Why aren't you acting this out, Polonius? I'm sorry. Act this out. Oh, act this out, yes. Far fell into discussion with the horse guards concerning the court marshal. <laughs> Brother Bellows and Ben struck in. Other magnates. Well, we'll hear more later. For you yourself, Dickens. For you uh, yourself, sir. Oh, for you, yes, you for yourself, sir, should be as old as I am. It's like a crab. You can go back. Oh, this be madness. Yet there is method in it. Will you walk uh, out of the air, my lord? Into my grave? Indeed, that is out of the air. How pregnant sometimes her replies are. My honorable lord, I most humbly take my leave of you. You cannot, sir, take from me anything that I will more willingly part with all, except my life. My life! Oh. Very well, my lord. These. <laughs> Oh, these people. Look back. You go to seek. You go to seek, my lord Hammond. There she is. Oh. Now you can go. God, 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 God save you! Oh, my honored lord. Hey, uh, excellence, good friends. How does sound, gilded stern? Oh.
Is it your own inclining? Is it a free visitation? Come! Deal justly with me. Come, come! They speak. What should we say, my lord? By anything! But to the purpose, you were sent for. And there is a kind confession in your looks, which your modesties have not craft enough to color. I know the uh, good king and queen have sent for you. Uh, to, to what end, my lord? That you must teach me. But let me conjure you by the right of our fellowship, by the consonancy of our youth, by the obligation of our ever preserved love. Be even and direct with me whether you were sent for or no. What say you? Uh, Nay, then I have an eye of you. If you love me, hold not off. My lord, we were sent for. Yeah, oh. I will tell you why. So shall my. Gilbertstern, what is that music? It's my favorite song. <laughs> What's I'm it so called? <laughs> it's uh, Garmin Arma. <laughs> One more time with feeling. Garmin <laughs> What's your favorite lyric from it? Oh, this is the It's one. really beautiful. Yeah. It goes, I hold you in my arms. Garmin Arma. <laughs> I will tell you why. I will tell you why. Thank God. So, so shall my anticipation prevent your discovery of your secrecy to the king and queen. Most no feather. I have of late, but wherefore I know not, lost all my mirth. What? A piece of work is a man. How noble to reason. How infinite in faculty. How express and admirable. In action, how like it is. In apprehension, how like a god. The beauty of the world. The paragon of animals, and yet, to me, what is this quintessence of dust? Man delights not me, <laughs> no, nor woman, neither, though by your smiling you seem to say so. My lord, there was no such stuff in my thoughts. Why, why did you laugh when I said man delights not me? Uh, but, uh, don't you think, my lord, if you delight not in man, what Lenten entertainment the players shall receive from you? We counted them on the way, and hither they are coming to offer you service. He that plays the king shall be welcome. His majesty shall have tribute of me. Who, what players are they? Even those you were wont to take delight in, the tragedians of the city. <laughs> Okay, upon mine honor. Then can each actor on his ass 
Uh, the best actors in the world, either for tragedy, comedy, history, uh, pastoral, pastoral, comical, historical, pastoral, uh, tragical, historical, tragical, comical, historical, pastoral, scene individable, or poem unlimited. Senna cannot, cannot be too heavy, nor Plautus too light, for the law of writ and the liberty. These are the only men. Oh, Jephthah, judge of Israel, what a treasure hath thou. What a treasure hath he, my lord? Why, one fair daughter, and no more, the which he loved, passing well. Still on my daughter. Look, look where my abridgments come. Oh, you're welcome, master. Comes down to a beard me in Denmark. <laughs> oh, my young lady, my mistress, by your lady, your uh, ladyship is nearer heaven than when I saw you last. Wow. Masters, you are welcome. We'll have a speech straight. Come, come, come. Give us a taste of your quality. Uh, uh, what speech, my lord? Uh, a passionate speech. I heard this speech. I heard this speech me a speech once, but it was never acted. One chief speech in it I chiefly loved. T'was a knee's tale to Dido. Uh, player one, what is the uh, act out the speech without speaking it? Other two players, you can help. Yeah, I think we need some words. Yeah. One chief speech in it. One chief speech in it I chiefly loved. T'was Aeneas' tale to Dido, mm -hmm. and uh, they're about a bit especially where he speaks of Priam's oh, slaughter. Right. If it live in your memory, begin at this line. Let me see. Let me see. Oh, the rugged Pyrrhus. He who Sable arms, black as his purpose did the night resemble, when he lay couching in the ominous horse. Hath now this dread and black complexion smeared with heraldry more and more, and blood of fathers, mothers, daughters, sons, and thus o'ersize it with coagulate gore with eyes like carbuncles. The hellish Pyrrhus, old grandsire Priam, seeks. Oh, God, my lord, well spoken, with good accent and good oh, no. Pyrrhus, as Priam drives, in rage strikes wide, though with the whipple and wind of his fell sword, the unnerved father falls. Then, senseless Ilium, Seeming to feel his blow with flaming top, takes prisoner Pyrrhus here. For lo, his sword, which was declining on the milky head of Reverend Priam, seemed in the air to stick. So as a painted tyrant Pyrrhus stood, aroused vengeance sets him new a work. And never did the Cyclops hammer fall with less remorse than Pyrrhus' bleeding sword now falls on Priam. Out! Out, thou strumpet fortune, all you gods! This is too long. Yeah. <laughs> it shall to the barbers! With uh, your beard, probably still there. <laughs> he's, uh, he's for a tale of Baudry, or he sleeps. <laughs> Say on, uh, come to head, give up. But who, oh, who had seen the ennobled queen? That's good, the ennobled queen is good. The ennobled queen. Up and down. About her lank and all o'er teemed loins, a blanket in the alarm of fear caught up, who had this scene with tongue in venom steeped against fortune's state, would treason have pronounced? But if the gods themselves did see her then, when she saw Pyrrhus make malicious sport in mincing with his sword her husband's limbs, the instant burst of clamor that 
she made would have made milts the burning eyes of heaven and passion in the gods. Oh, where he had not turned his color and there's tears in his eyes, pray you no more. Tis well. Uh, I'll have thee speak out the rest soon. Uh, good, my lord. Will you see the players well bestowed? My lord, I will use them according to their desert. That's bodikins, man better. Use every man after his desert, and who should scape whipping, use them after your own honor and dignity. The less they deserve, the more merit is in your bounty. Take them in. Come, sirs. Follow him, friends. We'll hear a play tomorrow. Oh, oh, dost thou hear me, friend? Uh, can you? I miss you. Friends, can you play? Friends. Can you play? Can you play the murder of Gonzago? Aye, my lord. Yeah. We'll have tomorrow night. And you could, for a need, uh, study a speech of some dozen or sixteen lines, which I would set down and insert in it, could you not? Aye, my lord. Very well. Uh, follow that lord, and uh, look you, mock him not. <laughs> oh, my good friends, I leave you till night. You are welcome to Elsinour. Good, my lord. Aye. So God by ye! Oh, now I am alone. Oh, what a rogue and peasant slave am I! Is it not monstrous that this player here, but in a fiction, in a dream of passion, could force his soul so to the soul can see that from her working all his visage or Tears in his eyes, distraction in his aspect, a broken voice, and his whole function, suiting with forms to his conceit, and all for nothing? For Hecuba? Ugh. What he to Hecuba? For Hecuba to him. <laughs> Emily, come back. Where are you going? I was just going to go on a walk. No, I think they want to hear what you have to say. Yes. He would drown. He would drown the stage with tears and cleave the general ear with foreign speech and found the ignorant and amaze indeed the very faculty of eyes and ears. Yet I can say nothing. Nope, not for a king upon whose property and most dear life a damned defeat was made. Am I a coward? Yeah. Who calls me villain, breaks my paint across, plucks off my beard and blows it in my face? Huh? Why, I should take it. Or cannot be, but I am pigeon liver, and lack gall to make oppression bitter. Or ere this, I should have fatted all the region kites with this slave's bloody awful. Help! A body villain! A body villain! Remorseless, treacherous, lecherous! What? Kindless, Kindless villain! Oh, thank you! What an ass am I! Hey. Help! I sure! This is I sure! This is most brave that I help the son. The son. Or daughter. Yeah, or daughter. I that I, the child, the child of the dear Murtherin, prompted to my revenge by heaven and hell, must. Like a whore, unpack my heart with words and fall a cursing like a fairy drab. Help. I have heard. I have heard. The guilty creatures sitting at a play have, by the very cunning of the scene, helped been struck, been struck so. so to the soul 
that presently they have confessed their malefactions. I'll have these players play something like the murder of my father before my uncle. Help. I'll observe his looks. I'll observe his looks. I'll tempt him to the quick if he but glance. I know my course. This might be a, a damned spirit that I have seen. Help. So soon, uh, maybe the devil, the devil hath power. There may be the devil, and the devil hath power to assume a pleasing shape. I'll ha help. Out of my weakness. Out of my weakness perhaps. and my melancholy, as he is very potent with such spirits, abuses me to damn me. I'll have grounds more relative than this. The play's the thing wherein I'll catch the conscience of the king. And can you find no? And can you by no drift of circumstance get from her why she puts on this confusion? She does confess. She feels herself distracted, but from what cause she will by no means speak. And nor do we find her to be poor or to be sounded, but when the crafty madness keeps aloof. When we would bring her on to some confession of her true state. <laughs> Did she receive you well? Oh, most like a gentlewoman. But with much forcing of her disposition. Uh, did you assay her to any pastime? Oh, madam, it, it so fell out that certain players we o'er wrought on the way, of these we told her, and there did seem in her a, a kind of joy to hear of it. Uh, they are about the court, and as I think they have already ordered this knight to play before her. Tis most true, and she beseeched me to entreat your majesties to hear and see the matter. <laughs> Rosencrantz and Guildenstern, I think the king wants to know about the song, too. Tell him. I want to know about the song, so, too. It's, it's by my favorite band, and uh, it's just, it's like really, it really gets to your heart, you know? Because sometimes you feel like you're just aimless and you're wandering around and you don't know what you're doing and you don't know why you're there or like, you know, what you... Where am and, I? It's, and, and then, and then, Gorman Arnar. Garnar. That's it. With all my heart, with all my heart, and it doth much content me to hear her so inclined. Good gentlemen, give her a further edge, and drive her purpose on to these delights. We shall, my lord. <laughs> Sweet Gertrude, leave us too, for we have closely sent for Hamlet thither that she, as to her by accident, may there affront Ophelia. Her father and myself, lawful espials, will so bestow ourselves that seeing unseen, we may of their encounter frankly judge and gather by her as she is behaved, if the affliction of her love or no, that thus she suffers for. I shall obey you. For your part, Ophelia, I do wish that your good beauties be the happy cause of Hamlet's wildness. So shall I hope your virtues will bring her to her wanted way again. Hold your arms. Madam, I wish you may. Ophelia, walk you here, read on this book that show of such an exercise may color your loneliness. <laughs> we, here, we are oft to blame in this Tis too much proved that with devotion's visage and pious action we do surge o'er the devil himself. <laughs> Tis true. How smart a lash that speech hath given my conscience. Ooh, I hear her coming. Let's withdraw, my lord. Speak or not speak? That is the question. Whether tis nobler in the mind to bear the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to take arms against a sea of troubles, and by opposing, end them, to die to sleep no more, and by a sleep to say we end the heartache and the thousand natural shocks that flesh is heir to, tis a consummation devoutly to be wished. 
die to sleep. To sleep for a chance to dream. Ah, there's the rope. We're in this sleep of death. What dreams may come when we have shuffled off this mortal coil must give us pause. This is help. The respect. This is the respect that makes calamity so long life. For who would bear the whips and scorns of time? The oppressor's wrongs, the poor man's contumely, the, the pains of this pride's love, the law's delay, when he himself might his quiet escape a bare bodkin. Who would these fardels bear to grunt and sweat under a weary life but that the thought and the dread of something after death, the undiscovered country from whose born no traveler returns? Help. Puzzles the, Puzzles the will and makes us rather bear those ills we have than fly to others that we know not of. Thus, conscience does make cowards of us all. And thus, the native hue of resolution is sicklied o'er with the pale cast of thought and help enterprises. and enterprises of great pith and moment. With this regard, their current turn away and lose the name of action. Soft, you know, paraphilia. Nick, and thy orisons, be all my sins remembered. My honored lord, I have references of yours and I have long the long How does my honored lord? How does my honored lord for this many days? I humbly thank you. Well, well, well. My honored Lord, I have remembrances of yours and I have long and long to be delivered. I pray you now receive them. No. No, I never gave you aught. My honored Lord, I know right well you did. And with them, words of so sweet breath composed as made these things more rich than perfume left. Take these again. But to the noble mind, rich gifts wax for and givers prove unkind. There, my Lord. <laughs> Are you honest, my lord? Are you fair? It means your lordship. Then if you be honest and fair, your honesty should admit no discourse to your beauty. <laughs> Could beauty, my lord, have any promise in your honesty? I. What are these gifts that you're trying to return? Tell the audience. Love notes. Jewelry. Gift cards. <laughs> kind of jewelry. Kind of jewelry? This. Well, I wanted to keep this one because it means too much to me. Good beauty, my lord. Good beauty, my lord. Have better commerce in your honesty. Aye, truly. For the power of beauty will sooner transform honesty from what it is to a bond than the force of honesty can translate beauty into his likeness. I did love you once. See, my lord, you made me believe so. You should not have believed it. I loved you not. I was the more deceived. Get thee to a nunnery. Why wouldst thou be a breeder of sinners? I am myself indifferent, honest, but I could accuse me of such things that it were better that my mother had not borne me. I am very proud. Ambitious, <laughs> revengeful, with more offenses at my beck than I have thoughts to put them in imagination, to give them shape, to act them in. What should such fellows as we do crawling between heaven and earth? We are errant knaves all. Believe none of us. Go thy ways to a nunner. Where's your father? At home, my lord. Let the doors be shut upon him, that he may play the fool in no way but in his own house. Farewell. Only powers restore her. Oh, help her, you sweet heavens. Help her, you sweet heavens. If thou dost, fairy, I'll give thee this plague for thy dowry. 
Be thou as chaste as ice, as pure as snow. Thou shalt not escape calumny. Get thee to a nunnery. Go! Farewell! Or, if thou needs must marry, marry a fool. For wise men know well enough what monsters you make of them. To a nunnery! Go! And quickly, too! Oh, Farewell! I have heard of your prattlings too well enough. Go to! I'll no more than it. it has made me mad. I say people have no more marriages. Those that are married already, all but one shall live. The rest shall keep as they are to a nunnery. Go! Oh, what a noble mind is here overthrown. The courtiers, soldiers, scholars, I, tongue, sword, the expectancy and rose of the fair state, the glass of fashion and the mold of form, the observed of all observers quite, quite down. Have I of ladies most deject and wretched that sucked the honey of her music vows now see that noble and most sovereign reason like sweet bells jangled out of tune and harsh? What am I saying? That unmatched, that unmatched form and feature of lone youth blasted with ecstasy. Oh. Woe is me to have seen what I have seen. See what I see. Love! <laughs> Her affections do not that way take, nor what she spake, though it lacked form a little, was not like madness. There's something in her soul, or which her melancholy sits on brood, and I do doubt the hatch, and the disclose will be some danger, which to prevent, I have, in quick determination, thus set it down. She shall with speed to England, for the demand of our neglected tribute. It shall do well. But yet do I believe the origin and commencement of this grief sprung from neglected love. How now, Ophelia? You need not tell us we uh, what Lord Hamlet said. We heard it all. My lord, do as you please, but if you hold it fit after the play, let her mother, the queen, all alone, entreat her to show her grief. Let her be round with her, and I'll be placed, so please you, in the ear of all of their conference. If she find her not, to England send her, or confine her where your wisdom best shall think. It shall be so. Madness in great ones must not unwatched go. Half time! Of nature, for 
anything so overdone is from the purpose of playing, which is, and what? Whose end? Whose end, both at the first and now, was and is to hold, as twere, a mirror up to nature. Oh, there be players that I have seen play and heard others praise that have so strutted and bellowed that I have thought some of nature's journeymen had made men and not made them well. They, they, they what did they do? They, they imitated. They imitated. So they imitated humanity so abominably. Uh, I hope we have reformed that indifferently with us, Miss. Oh, reform it all together. And let those that play your clowns speak no more than is set down for them. For there be of them that will themselves laugh to set on some quantity of barren spectators to laugh. Though, in the meantime, some necessary question of the play be then to be considered. That's villainous and shows a most pitiful ambition in he that uses it. Go, make you ready. Ah, now, my lord, will the king hear this piece of work? And the queen, too, and that presently. Bid the players make haste. Make haste. No, don't <laughs> Will you two help to hasten them? Oh, oh we will, my lord. We will, my lord. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> what hoa, Horatio? What hoa, Horatio? Ah! Here, sweet lord, at your service. Uh, nay. Horatio. Horatio, thou art Ian, just such a one as e'er my conversation coped with all. Um, dear lord. Nay. Do not think I flatter. Give me that one that is not passion's slave, and I will wear her in my heart's core. I, in my heart of heart, as I do thee. And something too much of this. Uh, <clears throat> there is a play tonight before the king. One scene of it comes near the circumstance which I have told thee of my father's death, I prithee, when thou seest that act of foot, observe mine uncle. If his occulted guilt do not itself unkennel in one speech, it is a damned ghost that we have seen. For I, mine eyes will rivet to his face, and after we will both our judgments join to censure of his seeming. Well, my lord. If he steal off the while this play is playing and escape detecting, I will play it up. Oh, they are coming to the play. I must be idle. Go find you a place. <clears throat> How fares our cousin Hamlet? Excellent, Faye. Now, uh, oh, my lord, you played at the university, you say? I did, my lord, and was accounted a good actor. And what did you enact? I did enact Julius Caesar. Ooh. I was killed at the Capitol. Brutus killed me. Oh, oh, it was a brute part of him to kill so capital a calf there. Be the players ready? Uh, my eye, my lord, they, they stay upon your patience. Uh, uh, come hither, my good Hamlet, to sit by me. No, good mother, here's metal more attractive. <laughs> ho, 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 ho. You mark that. Lady, shall Lady, I? Lady, shall I? Lie in your lap? No, my lord. I mean, my head upon your lap. Aye, my lord. Do you think I meant country matters? <laughs> I think nothing, my lord. That's a fair thought. To lie between maid's legs. What is my lord? Nothing. <laughs> you are merry, my lord? Who, I? <laughs> I, my lord. What should a girl do but be merry? For look. How cheerfully my mother loved, and my father died within two hours. Nay, tis twice two months, my lord. So long! Nay, then, 
Let the devil wear black, for I'll have two of sables. Oh, heavens! Died two months ago and not forgotten. Then there's hope. A great man's memory may outlive his life half a year. <laughs> Full thirty times hath Phoebus' cart gone round Neptune's salt watch and Tellus orbit ground since love our hearts and hymen did our hands unite commutual in most sacred band. So many journeys may the sun and moon make us again count o'er ere love be done. But woe is me, you are so sick of late, so far from cheer and from your former state that I distrust you, yet though I distrust Discomfort you, my lord, if nothing must. Faith, I must leave thee, love, and shortly too. My operant powers, my functions leave to do. And thou shalt live in this fair world behind. Honored, beloved, and happily one as kind. For husband shalt thou... Oh, confound the rest. Such love must needs be treason in my breast. In second husband, let me be accursed. None wed the second, but who killed the first. Wormwood. 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 <laughs> the instances that second marriage move are base respects of thrift, but none of love. A second time I kill my husband dead when second husband kisses me in bed. So think thou wilt no second husband wed, but die thy thoughts when thy first lord is dead. Nor earth to give me food, nor heaven light. Sport and repose lock from me day and night. Both here and hence pursue me lasting strife, if once a widow ever I be a wife. If she should, she should break it down. Tis deeply sworn, sweet Leave me here a while. My spirits grow dull, and I would fain, I would beguile the tedious day with sleep. Sleep, rock thy brain, and never come mischance between us twain. Madam, how like you this play? Uh, the lady protests too much. The lady protests too much, methinks. Oh, but she'll keep her word. What do you call the play? The mousetrap. <laughs> Books! Black! Hands apt and drugs fit, and time agreeing, confederate season, else no creature seeing. Thou mixture rank of midnight weeds collected with Hackett's ban, thrice blasted, thrice infected, thy natural magic and dire property on wholesome life you serve immediately. The king rises. What? Oh, my lord. You owe the play. Give me some light. Away. Light, 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 light. Let the struck in near go weave the heart on gallant play. For some must watch while some must sleep. So runs the world away. Oh, good Horatio. I'll take the ghost's word for a thousand pounds. Did you perceive? Very well, my lord. Upon the talk of the poisoning? Uh, I did very well know him. <sighs> my lord, the queen would speak with you, and presently. Do you see that cloud? That's almost in shape like a camel. By the miss, and it is like a camel indeed. Uh, he thinks it's like a weasel. It is marked <laughs> like a weasel. Or... Like a whale. Verily like a whale. Then will I come to my mother by and by. I will say so. They fool me to the top of my bed. I will come by and by. By and by is easily said. Leave me, friend. Now the very witching hour of night, when churchyards yawn and hell itself breathes out contagion to the world. Now could I drink hot blood and do such bitter business as the day would quake to look on. Soft now, to my mother. Oh, my offense is rank. It smells to heaven. It hath the primal eldest curse on it. Brother's mirth. 
pray can I not, though inclination be as sharp as will, my stronger guilt defeats my strong intent. What if this cursed hand were thicker than itself with brother's blood? Is there not rain enough in the sweet heavens to, to wash it white as snow? Where to serves mercy? My fault is past, but oh, what form of prayer can serve my turn? Forgive me my foul murder? That cannot be, since I am still possessed of those effects for which I did the murder. My crown, my own ambition, and my queen. When one be pardoned and retain the offense, try what repentance can. What can it not? Yet what can it, when one cannot repent? Bow, stubborn knees, and heart with strings of steel, be soft as sinews of the newborn babe. All may be well. All may be well. Enter him. Now might I do it pat, now he is praying. And now, I'll do it. And so he goes to heaven. So am I revenged. That would be scant. A villain kills my father, and for that, I, this foul, what? Girl. I, this foul child, do this same villain send to heaven. Oh, this is not revenge. He took my father grossly, full of bread, with all his crimes broad blown, as fresh as made. And how his audit stands, who knows, save heaven. But in our circumstance and course of thought, it is heavy with him. And am I then revenged to take him in the purging of his soul when he is fit and seasoned for his passage? No. Up, sword. And know thou a more horrid head when he is drunk asleep, or in his rage, or in the incestuous pleasure of his bed, and gaming, swearing, or about some act that has no relish of salvation in it. Then trip him, that his heels may kick at heaven, and that his soul may be as damned and black as hell, whereto it goes. My mother stays. This visit but belongs thy days. My words fly up. My thoughts remain below. Words without thoughts never to heaven go. She will uh, come straight. Look, you lay home to her. Tell her her pranks have been too broad to bear with, and that your grace hath screened and stood between much heat and her. I'll silence me in here. Pray you, be round with her. Mother! 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 I I'll warrant you, fear me not. Withdraw, I hear her coming. Now, Mother, what's the matter? Uh, Hamlet, thou hast thou father much offended. Mother! You have my father much offended. Come, come, answer with an idle tongue. Go, go, you question with an idle tongue. How now, Hamlet? What's the matter now? Have you forgot me? No, by the rude, not so. You are the queen, your husband's brother's wife. Would you were not so? You are my mother. Nay, then I'll set those to you that can speak. Come, come, and sit you down. You shall not bow. You go not till I set you up a glass where you may see the inmost part of you. What wilt thou do? Thou wilt not murder me? Help! Help! Ho -ho! Well, ho -ho! Help! Help! How now? A rat? Dead for a ducat, dead! I'm slain! Oh, what hast thou done? Nay, I know not, is it the king? No, what a rash and bloody deed this is! A is bloody deed. Almost as bad, good mother, as kill a king and marry 
with his brother. Uh, as kill a king? Aye, lady, t'was my word. Thou wretched, rash, intruding fool. Farewell. I took thee for thy betters. Take thy fortune. Leave wringing of your hands. Peace. Sit you down and let me wring your heart. For so I shall if it be made of penetrable stuff. What have I done? That thou dare swag thy tongue in going so rude against me? Such an act that blurs the grace and blush of modesty, calls virtue hypocrite, takes off the rose from the fair forehead of an innocent love and makes a blister there. Thank me. What act that roars so loud and thunders in the index? Look, look here upon this picture and on this, the counterfeit presentiment of two brothers. See what a grace was seated on his brow, Hyperion's curl, the front of Jove himself, and I, like Mars, to threaten or command. This was your husband. Look you now what follows. Here is your husband, like a mildewed ear, blasting his wholesome breath. Have you eyes? Oh, Hamlet, just speak no more. Turn mine eye to my very soul, and there I see such black and grained spots as will not leave their track. Nay, but to live in the rank sweat of an enseamed bed, stewed in corruption, honeying and making love over the nasty sty. You'll speak to me no more. For it sounds like daggers enter in my ears. No more, sweet Hamlet. A king of friends and captains. Save me. Hover over me with your wings, you heavenly guards. What would your gracious figure? Unless she's mad. Do do you not come, your tardy child, to chide that lapsed in time and passion lets go by the important acting of your dread command? Oh, say! Do not forget! This visitation is but to wet thy almost bludgeon purpose! But look! Amazement on thy mother sits! Speak to her, Hamlet! How is it with you, lady? <laughs> Alas! How is it with you? That you bend your eye on vacancy and, and with their corporal air do hold discourse. Whereon do you look? On him. On him. Look you how pale he glares. Look you there. Look how it steals away. My father in his habit as he lived. Look where he goes even, even now out of the portal. This is the very coinage of your brain. This bodiless creation ecstasy and very... Coming in. Ecstasy! My pulse, as yours, doth temperately keep time and make as healthful music. It is not madness! Oh, Hamlet, thou hast cleft my heart in twain. Throw away the worser part of it and live the purer with the other half. Good night. Go not to my uncle's bed. For this same Lord, I do repent. Help. But heaven hath pleased it so. But heaven hath pleased it so. Punish me with this and this with me. I will bestow him and will answer well the death I gave him. So again, good night. I must be cruel only to be kind. Thus bad begins and worse remains behind. What shall I do? I must to England. You know that? Alas, oh. I forgot. Tis so concluded on. A 
this man shall set me packing. I'll, uh, I'll love his guts into the neighbor room. Uh, mother, good night. Hmm. Indeed, this counselor is now most still, most secret, and most brave, who was in life a foolish, prating knave. Ah, uh, come, sir. Draw toward an end with you. Good night, mother. There's matters in these sighs, these profound heaves. You must translate. Tis fit we understand them. Where is your girl? Uh, my lord, what have I seen tonight? What, Gertrude? How do you handle it? Mad as the seas and wind. Contend which is the mightier in his lawless fit. Yeah, in her lawless fit behind the heiress, hearing something stir, she whipped out her rapier and cries, A rat, a rat! And in her brainish apprehension, kills the unseen good old man. Oh, heavy deed! It had been so with us, had we been there! His, her liberty is full of threats to all, to you! Yourself, to us, to everyone. Alas, how shall this bloody deed be answered? It will be laid to us. Where is she gone? To, to draw apart the body she hath killed. Gertrude, come away. The sun, no sooner shall the mountains touch, but we will ship her hence. And this vile deed, which we must, with all our majesty and skill, both countenance and excuse. Safely stowed. Oh, what noise! Who calls on Hamlet? Oh, here they come. What have you done with the body, my lord? With the dead body? Compounded it with dust, where to tis kin. My lord, you must tell us where the body is and go with us to the king. The body is with. The king, but the king <laughs> is not with the body. The king is a thing. A, a, a thing, my lord? Of nothing. Uh, uh, where the dead body is bestowed, my lord, or we cannot get from her. Now, Hamlet, where's Polonius? At supper. <laughs> At supper, where? Not where he eats, but where he is eaten. A certain convocation of worms are eaten at him. Your worm is your only emperor for diet. We fat all creatures to fat us. And we fat ourselves for maggots. Your fat king and your lean beggar is but variable service to dishes. But to one table, that's the end. What dost thou mean by this? Nothing but to show you how a king may go a progress through the guts of a beggar. Where is Polonius? In heaven! Send hither to see. If your messenger find him not there, seek him in the other place yourself. But indeed, if you find him not this month, you shall knows him as you go up the stairs into the lobby. Go, seek him there. He will stay till you come. Hamlet, this deed of thine, for thine especial safety, which we do tender as dearly grieve for that which you have done, must send thee hence with fiery quickness. Therefore, prepare thyself for England. For England? I, Hamlet. Good. So, is it if thou knewst our purpose? Farewell, dear mother. <laughs> Thy loving father, Hamlet. My mother. Father and mother is man and wife. Man and wife is one flesh. And so, my mother. Come for England! Follow her at foot. Tempt her with speed aboard! Delay it not! I'll have her heads tonight! In England, if my love thou holdst at aught, 
as my great power thereof may give thee sense by letters conjuring to that effect the present death of Hamlet. Do it, England! For like the hectic in my blood she rages, and thou must cure me till I know tis done. Howe'er my haps, my joys are ne'er begun. I will not speak with her. I will not speak with her. Queen, I will not speak. I don't have that love. I will not speak with her. I will not speak with her. She speaks much of her father. She, she speaks things in doubt that carry but half sense. For her speech is nothing. Yet the unshaped use of it doth move the hearers to collection. They aim at it, indeed would make one think there would be thought, though nothing sure, yet much unhappily. Were good she were spoken with, for she may strew dangerous conjectures in ill-breeding minds. Let her come in so full of artless jealousy as guilt, it spills itself in fearing to be spilt. Enter Ophelia! Give me my father! Only good Laertes, 
a drop of blood that's called proclaims me master! What is the cause, Laertes, that thy rebellion looks so giant-like? Let him go, Gertrude. Do not fear our person. Tell me, Laertes, why art thou thus incensed? Let him go, Gertrude. Speak, man. Where's my father? Dead. But not by him. How can you? Let him demand his fill. How can you dead? I'll not be juggled with! To hell allegiance, vows to the blackest devil, conscience and grace to the profoundest pit. I dare damnation. To this point, I stand. Let come what comes, or I'll be revenged most cruelly for my father. Good Laertes, if you desire to know the certainty of your dear father's death, if writ in revenge that soup stake, you will draw both friend and foe, winner and loser. None but his enemies. Will you know them, then? To his good friend, thus wide, I'll open my arms, and like the kind life-rendering politician, repast them with my blood. Why, now you speak like a good child and a true gentleman, that I am guiltless of your father's death and am most insensible grief for it, it shall as level to your judgment pierce as day does to your eye. And on his grave reads many a tear. Fare you well, my dove. Hadst thou thy wits, and didst persuade revenge, it could not move thus. Oh, you must calm a down, and you must sing a down. A, oh, the wheel becomes it. It is the false steward that stole the master's daughter. There's no things more than matter. There's Rosemary. That's for remembrance. Pray, look, remember. And, and there's pansies. That's for thoughts. A document in madness. Thoughts and remembrance fitted. There's fennel for you and columbines. <laughs> there's rue for you and here's some for me. We, we may call it herb of grace the Sundays. <laughs> you must wear your rue with a difference. There's a daisy. I would give you some violets, but they withered all when my father died. They say it made a good end. Your bonny sweet Robin is all my joy. Thought and affliction, passion and hell itself, she turns to favor and to prettiness. Will he not come again? And will he not come again? No. No, he is dead. Go to thy deathbed. He will never come again. His beard is white as snow. All black and once is cold. He is gone. He is gone. And we cast away moan. For mercy on his soul. And of all Christian souls, I pray God. God, by you see this? Oh, you gods! Laertes, I must come in with your grief, or you deny me right. Go but apart. Make choice of whom your wisest friends you will, and they shall judge twixt you and me, if by direct or collateral hand they find us touched. We will our kingdom give, our crown, our life and all that we call ours to you in satisfaction. But if not, be you content to lend your patience to us, and we shall jointly labor with your soul to give it due content. Let this be so. His means of death, his obscure burial, no trophy, sword, nor hatchment, or his bones, no noble right, nor no formal ostentation, cry to be heard as twere from heaven to earth, that I must call it in question. So you shall, and where the offense is, let the great axe fall. I pray you, go with me. Oh, God, God bless you, sir. 
Lord bless you too. Well, well, he, he shall, sir. And it please him. I, I, there, there's a letter for you, sir. And it comes from the ambassador that was bound for England. If, if your be, name be Horatio, as I, I am let to know it is. Horatio. Hmm. When thou shalt have overlooked this, give these fellows some means to the king. They have letters for him. Ere we were two days old at sea, a, a pirate of very warlike appointment gave us chase. Finding ourselves too slow of sail, we put on a compelled valor. In the grapple, I boarded them. On the instant, they got clear of our ship, so I alone became their prisoner. They have dealt with me like thieves of mercy, but they, they knew not what they did. I am to do a good turn for them. Let the king have the letters I have sent, and repair thou to me with as much haste as thou wouldst fly death. I have words to speak in your ear will make thee dumb. These good fellows will bring thee where I am. Rose and Krantz and, and Guildenstern hold their course for England. Of, of them I have much to tell thee. Farewell, she that thou knowest thine, Hamlet. Uh, come, I, I will give you way for these your letters, and, and do it the speedier that you may direct me to her from whom you brought them. Now must your conscience and my acquittance seal, and you must put me in your heart for friend that she, which hath your noble father slain, pursued my life. It well appears. But tell me, why you proceeded not against these feats, as by your safety, wisdom, and all things else, you mainly were stirred up? Oh, for two especial reasons, which may to you perhaps seem unsinewed, but yet to me they are strong. The queen, her mother lives almost by her looks, and for myself, she is so conjunctive to my life and soul I could not buy her. The other motive is the great love the general gender bear her. And so have I, a noble father lost, a sister driven into desperate terms, but my revenge will come. <laughs> Break not your sleeps for that. You must not think that we are made of stuff so flat and dull that we can let our beard be shook with danger and think it pastime. You shortly shall hear more. I loved your father, and we love ourselves. And that, I hope, will teach you to imagine. How now? What news? Well, letters, my lord, from, from, from Hamlet. This to your majesty, and, and this to the queen. Hamlet and brother. Well, sailors, my lord, they say, I, I saw them not. Laertes, you shall hear them. Leave us! High and mighty, you shall know I am set naked on your kingdom. Tomorrow I shall beg leave to see your kingly eyes. When I shall, first asking your pardon thereunto, recount the occasions of my sudden and more strange return, Hamlet. What should this mean? Are all the rest come back? Or is it some abuse or no such thing? Uh, know you the hand? Tis Hamlet's character, naked. And in a postscript he says here, she says alone. Can you advise me? I'm lost in it, my lord. But let her come. It warms the very sickness in my heart that I shall live and tell her to her teeth, Thou thus didst thou. If it be so, Laertes, as how should it be so? How otherwise will you be ruled by me? If so, you'll not or rule me to a peace? To thine own peace. If she be now returned, I will work her to an exploit now ripe in my device, under the which she shall not choose but fall, and for her death no wind of blame shall breathe, but even her mother shall uncharge the practice and call it accident. Some two months since, here was a gentleman of Normandy. He made confession of you and gave you such masterly report for art and exercise in your defense for your rapier most especially, that, that she cried out, "'Twould be a sight indeed if one could match you, sir. This report of hers did Hamlet so 
in venom with her envy that she could nothing do but wish and beg your sudden coming or to play with her. Laertes, was your father dear to you? Or aren't you but the painting of a sorrow, a face without a heart? Why ask you this? Hamlet comes back. What would you undertake to show yourself, your father's son, indeed, more than in words? To cut her throat in the church? No place, indeed, should murder sanctuaries. Revenge should have no bounds, but good, Laertes. Will you do this? Keep close within your chamber. Hamlet returned, shall know you are come home. We'll put on those shouts. Praise your excellence. Set a double varnish on the fame the French woman gave you. Being you in fine together and wager on your heads, she will, remiss, most generous and free from all contriving, will not peruse the foils. So that with ease or with a little shuffling, you may choose a sword unbated and in a passive practice, requit her for your father. I will do it. And for that purpose, I'll anoint my sword. I bought an unction of a montebank so mortal, I but dipped a knife in it. Where it draws blood, no cataplasm so rare under the moon can save the thing from death that is but scratched with all. I'll touch my point with this contagion, that if I gall her slightly, it may be death. Let us further think of this. If this should fail, to about another say, therefore, this project should have a back or a second that might hold. If this should blast in proof, soft, let me see. I have. When in your motion you are hot and dry and that she calls for drink, I'll have prepared her a chalice for the nuns. Whereon but sipping, if she by chance escape your venom stuck, our purpose may hold there. Oh, sweet queen! What? Woe doth tread upon another's heel, so fast they'll follow. Your sister's dead, Laertes. Drowned, Laertes. Drowned? Oh, where? There is willow grows a slant of brook that shrews his horde leaves in the glassy stream. There with fantastic garlands she did come. There on the pendant boughs her cornet weeds clamoring to hang. An envious sliver broke, fell in the weeping brook, her clothes spread wide. And mermaid like a, a while they bore her up, which time she chanted snatches of old tunes as one incapable of her own distress unto that element. But long it could not be till that her garments, heavy with her drink, pulled the poor wretch from her melodious bite to muddy death. Alas, that she is drowned? Drowned, drowned. Whoa! much of water hast thou, poor Olivia, and therefore I forbid my tears. Adieu, my lord. I have a speech of fire that fain would blaze. <laughs> but that this folly doubts it. Let's follow. Gertrude, how much I had to do to calm his rage. Now fear I this will give it start again, therefore let's Follow. You got it? He's fine. Hey! Is she to be buried in Christian burial that willfully seeks her own salvation? Well, I tell thee she is, and therefore make her grave straight. The crowner that hath sate on her and finds it Christian burial. How can it be unless she drowned herself in her own defense? A white tea's found so. It must be say offendendo. It cannot be else. For here lies the point. If I drown myself wittingly, it argues an act. An act hath three branches. It's an act to do and to perform our goal. She drowned herself wittingly. Nay, but... Give me leave. Oh. Here lies the water. Yeah. Here lies the man. Good. Yeah. If the man go to the water and drown himself, it is willy-nilly he goes 
Yeah, go, is Marky that? But if the water come to him, he drowns not himself. Argo, he that is not guilty of his own death shortens not his own life. Okay, but is this law? I marry is Crowner's quest law. Will you have the truth on it? If she had, if this had not been a gentlewoman, she should not have been buried out of Christian burial. Why, there thou sayest. Come, my spade, there is no ancient gentleman but gardeners, ditchers, and grave makers. They hold up Adam's profession. Was he a gentleman? Oh, he was the first that ever bore arms. Well, then why he had none? What are thy heathen? Thou dost understand the scripture. No. The scripture says Adam digged. Thou canst not dig without arms. Okay. I'll put another question to thee. If thou answerest me not of the purpose, confess thyself. I'll go to. Uh, what, what is he that builds stronger than either the mason, the shipwright, or the carpenter? Oh, 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 the, the gallows maker, for that frame outlays a thousand tenants. I <laughs> like thy wit well yeah. enough in good faith. The gallows does well, but how does it well? It does well to those that do ill. Now dost thou dost ill say to the gallows is built stronger than the church. Argal, the gallows may do well to thee. Toot! Again, come. Well, who builds stronger than a mason, a shipwright, or a carpenter? Aye, tell me that, nun yoke. Uh, no, not I can tell. Toot! Uh, yes, I cannot tell. Oh, to cudgel thy brains no more about it. For your dull ass will not bend his pace with beating. And when you are asked this question next, say, A grave maker, the houses that he makes last till doomsday. Uh, <laughs> Go, fetch me a stoop of liquor. <laughs> In youth when I did love, did love, me thought it was very sweet to contract all the time and before my behold, me thought there was nothing meet. <laughs> and this fellow, no feeling of his business that he stains at grave making? The custom hath made it in him a property of easiness. Tis e'en so. The hand of little employment hath the daintier sense. Ah, but age with his stealing That ste skull had a tongue in it. They could sing seeps. once. I'm how the name how the name jowled into the, the crowd as if it was a Jabo that did the first murder. It might be the page of a politician, which this ass or offices, one that could circumvent God. Might it not? Uh, it might, my lord. <laughs> or of a courtier, which would say, good morrow, meet lord. Oh, how dost thou, good lord? This might be lord such a, such one. a one. Who praised lord uh, such a one's horse when he meant to beg it. I did not. My lord. Did these these bones. bones cost no more the breeding, but to pray loggets with them, Oh, mine ache to think on it. A pickaxe! There's yes. another! And for oh, where be these quidditz oh, now? Quillets, his cases, his tenures, and his tricks. Why does he suffer this rude knave now to knock him about the Scots with a dirty shovel? And will not tell him of his action of battery? Huh. I will speak to this fellow. Who's grave? Whose grave is this, sir? Mine, miss. Oh, for a pit of clay to be made, or such a guest is neat. <laughs> I think it be thine indeed, for thou liest in it. <laughs> you lie out on it, miss, and therefore it is not yours. For my part, I do not lie in it, and yet it is mine. <laughs> thou dost lie in it, to be in it and say tis thine. Tis for the dead. Not the quick, therefore thou liest. Tis a quick lie, miss. Twill away again from me to you. <laughs> what man dost thou did for? For no man, sir, miss. What woman, then? For none, neither. Who is to be buried in? One that was a woman, miss, but rest her soul, now she's dead. How absolute this knave is. 
We must speak by the car, or equivocation will undo us. How long hast thou been a grave maker? Of all the days of the year, I came to it the day that our last King Hamlet overcame Fortinbras. How long is that since? C cannot you tell that? Every fool can tell that. It was the very day that young Hamlet was born, she that was mad and sent into England. Aye, Mary, why was she sent into England? Why, because she was mad. She shall recover her wits there, or if she do not, it's no great matter there. Why? Twill not be seen in her. There the men are as mad as she. How came she mad? Very strangely, they say. How strangely? Faith, even with losing her wits. Upon what ground? Why, here in Denmark. Oh. <laughs> I have been sexting your man and boy 30 years. Oh, how long will a man lie in the earth ere he rots? Oh, if faith, if he had been not rotten before he die, as we have many pocky courses nowadays that will scarce hold a laying in, <laughs> he will last you some eight years. Or nine year. A tanner will last you nine year. Why he more than another? Why, sir, his hide is so tanned with his trade that he will keep out water a great while. And while your water uh, is your horse in decay or your horse in dead body. Ah, here's a skull. <laughs> Here, now this skull had lain in the earth three and twenty years. Whose was it? A horse and mad fellow it was. Whose do you think it was? Uh, nay, I know not. Oh, pestilence on him for a mad rope. He poured a flag and a reddish on my head once. This same skull, miss, this same skull, miss, was, was Yorick's skull, the king's jester. This? In that. Let me see. Alas, poor Yorick. I knew him, Horatio, a fellow of infinite jest. Of most excellent fancy. He hath borne me on his back a thousand times. How abhorred my imagination is. My gorge rises at it. Here hung those lips that I have kissed I know not how. Oh. Where be your jives now? Your gambols, your songs, your flashes of merriment that were wont to set the table a roar. No one now to mock your own leering, quite chopped fallen, but soft, but soft, aside, here comes the king. The queen. Queen. Who is it they follow? Couch the me queen. a queen. Who is it they follow? Couch me a while and mark. What ceremony else? Laertes. What ceremony else? Her obsequies have been as far enlarged as we have warrant as her death was doubtful. And but that great command or sways the order she should in ground unsanctified have long till the last trumpet. Must there no more be done? No more be done. We should profane the service of the dead to sing sage requiem and such rest to her as to peace parted souls. Lay her in the, lay her in the earth. And from her fair and unpolluted flesh may violets spring. I tell thee, churlish priest, a ministering angel shall my sister be when thou liest. How? Hamlet, what, the fair Ophelia? Hamlet. What? Fair Ophelia? Sweets, a sweet farewell. I hope thou should have been my Hamlet's wife. I thought thy bride bed to death, sweet maid, to not screw thy grave. Oh, terrible war, all ten times trouble on that cursed head whose wicked deed thy most ingenious sense deprived thee of. Hold off the earth a while till I have caught her once more in my arms. Now, pile your dust upon the quick and dead till of this flat a mountain you have made of blue Olympus. What is he whose griefs bears such an emphasis? Whose praise of sorrow conjure the wandering stars and makes them stand like wonder-wounded hearers? This is I, Hamlet the day. The devil take thy soul! Yet have I so 
something in me that is dangerous, which let thy wiseness fear. Away thy hand! Cut them asunder! Hamlet! Hamlet! My lord, my lord, ah. be quiet! No. I loved Ophelia! Forty thousand brothers could not, with all their quantity of love, make up my sum. What wilt thou do for her? Oh, she is mad, Laertes. For the love of God, forbear her. Come, show me what thou'll do. Would weep? Would fight? Would tear thyself? I'll do it. Dost thou come here to whine, to outface me with leaping in her grave? Be very quick with her, and so will I. I'll rant as well as thou. This is mere madness. What is the reason that you use me thus? I loved her ever. But tis no matter. Let Hercules himself do what he may. The cat will mew, and dog will have his day. I pray you, good Horatio, wait upon her. Good Gertrude, put some watch over your girl. This grave shall have a living monument, an hour of quiet. Shortly shall we see. Till then, in patience, our proceeding be. Enter Hamlet and Horatio. Up from my cabin, wrote I to find out there. Return the sword, please. You don't get a head start at practice. <laughs> Up from my cabin, groped I to find out them. Had my desire, fingered their packet, and in fine, withdrew to mine own room again, making so bold my fears forgetting my manners to unseal their grand commission. Where I found, Horatio, oh, royal knavery, an exact command, my head should be struck up. It's possible. Here's the commission. Read it at more leisure. Being thus benetted round with villains, I sate me down and I devised a new commission. Wrote it fair. An earnest conjuration from the king. <clears throat> As England was his faithful tributary, he should the bearers put to sudden death. Not shriving time allowed. So, Gildenstern and Rosencrantz, go to it. Why, man, they did make love to this employment. They are not near my conscience. Their debate doth by their own insinuation grow. Why, what a king is this? Does it not, thinkst thee, stand me now upon he that hath killed my king and whored my mother? And with such cousinage, is not perfect conscience to quit him with this arm? And is it not to be damned to let this canker of our nature come in further evil? It must be shortly known to him from England what is the issue of the business there. It will be short. The interim's mine, and a man's life's no more than to say, one. But I am very sorry. Good Horatio, that to Laertes I forgot myself. For by the image of my cause, I see the portraiture of his. I'll count his favors. Assure the bravery of his grief did put me into a towering passion. Peace, who comes here? Your lordship is right welcome back to Denmark. I humbly thank you, sir. Just, uh, oh, just know that water fly. No, my good lord. Oh, thy state is more gracious, for it is a vice to know him. He hath much land and fertile. Tis a chalk. But as I saw, a spacious in the possession of dirt. Sweet lord, if your friendship were at leisure, I should impart a thing to you from his majesty. I will receive it with all diligence of spirit. Put your bonnet to its right use for the head. I thank your lordship, it is very hot. No, believe me, it is very cold. The wind is northerly. It, it is indifferent cold, my lord, indeed. Eh, methinks it's very sultry. Whew, hot for my complexion. Exceedingly, my lord, it is very sultry, as true I cannot tell how. 
But my lord, his majesty bade me signify to you that he had laid a great wager on your head. Miss, this is the matter. I beseech you, remember. <laughs> Nay, good faith, for my own ease in good faith. <laughs> Miss, you are not ignorant of what excellence Laertes is and his weapon. What's his weapon? Rapier and dagger. That's two of his weapons. But, the, well... The, that Sir King has waged with him six Barbary horses, against which he is employed, as I take it, six French rapiers and poniards. The king sir laid in a dozen passes between you and him. He shall not exceed you three hits. Sir, I will walk here in the hall. If it please his majesty, tis the breathing time of day with me. Let the foils be brought, the gentleman willing, and the king hold his purpose. I will win for him if I can. If not, I'll gain nothing but my shame and the odd hit. Shall I re-deliver you in so? To this effect, sir, after what flourish your nature will. I commend my duty to your lordship. Yours! Yours! He does well to commend it himself. There are no tongues else for his tongue. For this lapwing runs away with the shell on his head. You will lose this wager, my lord. I do not think so. Since he went into France, I have been in continual practice. I shall win at the odds. But thou wouldst not think how all here about my heart, but it's no matter. If your mind is like anything, obey. I, I will forestall the repair hither and say that you're not fit. Not a whit. We defy augury. There's a special providence in the fall of a sparrow. If it be now, tis not to come. If it be not to come, it will be now. If it be not now, yet it will come. The readiness is all. Since no man has aught of what he leaves, what is it to leave betimes? Come, Hamlet, come and take this hand from me. <laughs> Give me your pardon, sir. I've done, oh, give me your pardon, sir. I've done you wrong, but pardon it as you are a gentleman. This presence knows, and you must needs have heard how I am punished with sore distraction. What I have done, that might your nature, honor, and exception roughly awake, I here proclaim was madness. Sir, in this audience, let my disclaiming from a purposed evil free me so far in your most generous thoughts that I have shot my arrow o'er the house and hurt my mother. I am satisfied in nature, whose motive in this case should stir me most to my revenge. But in my terms of honor, I stand aloof and will no reconcilement. I do receive your offered love, like love and will not wrong it. I do embrace it freely. And will this brother's wager frankly play? Give us the foils, come on. Come one for me. I'll be your foil, Laertes. In mine ignorance, your skill shall like a star in the darkest night stick fiery off indeed. Mock me, lady? No, by this hand. Give them the foils, young Osric, cousin Hamlet. You know the wager. Very well, my lord. Your grace has laid the odds of the weaker side. I do not fear it. <laughs> I have seen you both, but since he is better, we have therefore odds. Uh, this one's too heavy. Let me see another. Well, this likes me well. These foils have all the length. Aye, my good lord. If Hamlet give the first or second hit, the king shall drink to Hamlet's better breath, and in the cup an union shall he throw, hmm? richer than that which four successive kings in Denmark's crown have worn. <laughs> now, the king drinks to Hamlet, Come, begin, and you the judge, bear a wary eye. <laughs> Come on, sir. 
Come on, sir. Again, stay! Give me the ring. Hamlet, mm -hmm. this pearl is thine. Here's to thy health. Give him the cup. Give her the cup, huh? I'll play this bout first. Step by a while. almost against my conscience. Help! For the third! Laertes, you but dally. Come. Pass with your best violence. I am afeard you make a wanton of me. Say you so? Come on. So, come on. Have they done away? Have they? How about you now? I'm dead, Horatius. 
you. Oh, wretched queen. I'll do. Let it be. Horatio, I'm dead. <laughs> now, Livis, report me and my cause is right to the unsatisfied. Never believe it. I am more an antique Roman than a Dane. He has yet some liquor left. No. Yes, thou no friend, give me the cup. Let go, by heaven, I'll have it. No oh, good, Horatio. What a wounded name. Things standing as they are shall live behind me if thou didst ever hold me in thy heart. Absent thee from felicity a while, and in this harsh world, draw thy breath in pain to tell my story. <laughs> what warlike noise is this? Lord Fortinbras, when conquests come from Poland to the ambassadors of England, gives this warlike volley. Ah! I die, Horatio! Oh, the, the potent poison quite overcrows my spirit. But I do prophesy the election lights on Fortinbras. He has my dying voice. So tell him, with the occurrence more or less, what I have solicited, the rest is silent. Ah! No! Ah! Ah! They'll crack open a noble heart. Good night, sweet, sweet princess. Lights of angels, sing thee to thy rest. Where is this sight? What is it you would see? If out of woe or wonder cease your search. This worry cries on havoc. Oh, proud death, what feast is toward in thine eternal cell, that thou so many princes have, as an act of shoot so bluntly hast struck? But since so jump upon this bloody question, give order that these bodies high on a stage be placed to the view, and let me speak to the yet unknowing world how these things came about. Let us haste to hear it, and call the noblest to the audience. But let the same be carefully performed, even whilst many minds are wild. Let's more mischief and mischance on plots and errors happen. Let four captains bear Hamlet like a soldier to the stage, for she was likely, had she been put on, to have proved most royally. Take up the body. Such a sight as this becomes the field, but here shows much amiss. <laughs> 